Spoke number four, equipment in the fitting process. We're being joined now by Tom Shea of the Henry Griffiths Company. Hi, Tommy. How are you? Welcome to Loxahatchee. Thank you. Tommy, let's first of all um, get a line, line angle reading from Missy. Okay. I'm going to tape the sole of this club. Now, why are you doing that, Tom? I need to know where the club is at impact when it hits the ball. Dynamically. Exactly. This is a dynamic process versus a static process. Static is? Standing still, measuring some body part to the ground. Doesn't work. Not in club fitting. It might work if you need to check your inseam length. <laughs> okay. 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 I'll let you do this, Tom. Okay. You're the expert here. I used to uh, hold for place kickers. Is that right? Hold your finished position, Missy. Thank you. Now, Tom, why hold your finish? We want players to swing to balance. We want to fit them f to the best move that they can make. We want to reward the behavior that we want to get. Okay. And, and most people obviously don't play in balance, so you might think that the equipment has something to do with that? Absolutely. The premise is equipment affects motion. If okay. you have a golf club that doesn't fit, you may need to move out of balance in order to make it hit the ball to the target. To be gratified. Absolutely. Okay. Let's, um, this club doesn't fit. The mark is well out toward the toe. Okay. Can we try that other one? Sure. Let me hold that one for you. Okay. I'm going to, again, tape the sole. Because you want to draw a comparison, basically. Yeah. And the, the mark will tell us w in which direction to head. Okay. I'm going in the opposite direction. We need another ball there. Okay. Again, you're the expert. Okay. All right, again, Missy, just hit the shot, hold your finished position. Mm. Okay. Thank you. And the mark on this club is in toward the heel. This one was towards the toe? Yes. What's the difference between these two clubs? These clubs have two different lie angles. What one, are they? One sets here. This is effectively five degrees flat. This club is effectively seven degrees upright. Well, there's the proof right there. It's two dramatic diff yeah. different readings and two different lie angles. Exactly. And as you saw, the shots went in two different directions okay. with basically the same swing. Okay. I can show you that with oh, the, what we the call a holy wedge. Okay. Why don't you do that for me? This shaft simply acts as an arrow. When the club is here, the ball goes there. If the club comes in at this angle, the ball will go here. If the club comes in at this angle, the ball will go there. If you have a club that comes in here and sends the ball to the right, you start to compensate to get the ball to go to the target, and then you need to move out of balance in order to do that. But Tommy, you taught the game like I, do for, like I do now for a long time. Yes. I mean, I see compensating movements every day. Most players are ill-fitted. If they make their best move, the ball will not go to the target. We want the player to have a club that fits so that he will be rewarded for making a move to balance, which is actually far easier to do than it is to move to out of balance. Okay. Number one mistake that most people make in buying equipment? They select the clubs themselves. They do not get an expert to guide them through the club so fitting maze. Anybody walking into a pro shop and picking up a set of clubs off a, off a shelf is crazy? It's a blind pig looking for an acorn. Okay. Once in a while, you find it. So equipment fitting is vital to teaching golf? Yes, and it can only be done by a competent teacher. Outdoors? Where you can evaluate the ball flight, not 10 feet from a net. Okay. Thank you very much, Tom. You're welcome. Spoke number five is next. Your practice routine. What do you get out of it? 